High voltage is widely regarded with distrust, but if used correctly it can be very useful. This is neither correct nor useful. I just found it interesting that this particular arc emits an intense blue light, while every other arc is rather violet. But let's start from the beginning. I wanted to upgrade my Keithley 236 source measure unit to turn it into a 237 high voltage source measure unit. And thanks to EEV block forum user 2N3055 and Reddit user Inductorman, that is now a realistic possibility. I had a hunch that the 237 and the 236 are mostly equal, and the schematics confirm that. So for the upgrade, I have to make a DC to high voltage converter. Add a couple of transistors to the existing output module and cut a jumper link. Even the firmware is equal, although a newer version than mine is available, so I'll quickly update that too. Whoa, careful, don't look at it. Oh, actually, I think it's fine. YouTube probably has a UVC filter installed. It's a germicidal lamp, a lot cheaper than a new EEPROM eraser and often available locally in aquatic stores for example. That allows the field effect transistor gates in the EEPROMs to discharge, so that they can be reprogrammed. It also kills bacteria on my dirty sink, which is a nice side effect. I'll reseal that quartz window, program the EEPROM and we are ready to go on. That high voltage converter circuit isn't even that complicated, but laying it out in CAD is always a time consuming job. Although it can also save a lot of time in troubleshooting when done properly. And I have yet to come across a project where no troubleshooting is required. At first I wanted to replicate the original layout completely. But I ended up doing it only in the high voltage area, because I managed to come up with a layout that needs neither extra vias nor jumper wires. That's preferred, at least for a single homemade board like this. It doesn't fit on a standard 100 by 160 mm board, so I have to use PCB material that was best before over 10 years. But I never had any problems with that before. And today isn't going to be the first time either. Just avoid the very edges and the black residue and it'll be fine. Usually I like to etch with ferric chloride at room temperatures. But today, just for the variety, I'm trying sodium persulfate in 50 degrees C water. Ah, as blue as a Caribbean sea. And a lot more toxic. Sodium persulfate on its own isn't that bad, but the dissolved copper is. In fact, if you live in Germany, you have to pay like 30 bucks for proper disposal of this stuff. But there's a recipe for reduction with steel wool. I'll link that down below if requested. Well, that turned out perfectly. I'll trim off the excess and start populating it right away. Hmm. Even though there's this and this, I had to go and buy a lot of new components. And especially those high voltage caps are rather expensive. Pretty boring to watch. Barely tolerable with a plop sound, maybe. But I'm not going to edit that for every component, tempting as it may be. How about a quick rundown of the circuit instead? In the service manual they call it a resonant converter, which would mean that there's an LC circuit somewhere, which is tuned precisely in such a way that it resonates. Entirely possible, but a bit hard to get right when there's, like, no information about the magnetic components. So luckily this thing seems to behave more like a switching power supply that is entirely dominated by a current controlled oscillator. 
that makes it reasonably tolerant with inductors and transformers, I hope. When the converter has just been turned on, the constant current source slowly charges C13, until the input high threshold voltage of this IC is crossed. When triggered like that, these ICs do nothing more than generate two slightly delayed pulses. Those two pulses pass the gate drive transformer T1. And guess what? They drive the gates of these two power MOSFETs. That sends one AC-ish waveform through the primary windings of T2. T2's AC-ish output voltage is multiplied by these 8-stage multipliers and filtered a bit to reduce noise. There's also a cute little two-stage multiplier for the feedback loop. Its output voltage passes a voltage divider and is fed into an op-amp. The op-amp's adjustable output voltage then takes control over the constant current source and the overall switching frequency at the same time. When the output voltage is too low, for example when a load is connected, it just goes a bit faster to compensate. In the meantime I've populated the board, except for the unknown transformers. I was a bit worried about those their inductances and turn ratios and all that. But it wasn't such a big deal in the end. In fact, I found an old eBay listing with photos of an original converter. And on one of those photos I found the part number of the gate drive transformer at least. Nothing special. I'll aim for the right turn ratio and primary inductance and then I can wind one myself easily. Wow, 20 turns seems to be the way to go here. Perfect in terms of inductance and resistance. So the two secondary windings will also be 20 turns each. I had a few more problems with the high voltage transformer T2. The aftermath. I basically tested everything I could find. But 20 primary and 120 secondary windings proved to be the best performer in the end. This time I'm also including a spacer between primary and secondary, because we are dealing with a higher voltage here. The size of this transformer might be an opportunity for improvement. Maybe the core gets magnetically saturated under load. I didn't do any calculations. Well, looking good at least. That's the most important part, isn't it? Alright, converter is done. Let's check the performance in a couple of tests. I'm using the HP differential probe, AC coupled, to check for noise. With a minimum of shielding I'm getting as little as 80 mV peak to peak on a 1200 volt rail. That's truly fantastic. And even under full load. <coughs> And even under full load, 10 milliamps, the noise doesn't get louder, just more frequent. In the end I want to put this in a full enclosure, and I think the output noise will be even lower then. There's also some filtering happening on the output module. I know that because I had to buy more of those expensive high voltage caps. At least with these flimsy quarter watt resistors, the module shouldn't be short circuited. Wait, short circuited? Is that right? Here I'm measuring the output voltage with a 10 to 1 divider. And apparently the converter still works fine with 34 volts. Even less with another T2 transformer, probably. I've Frankensteined together a 120k resistor that can draw 10 milliamps without blowing up right away. 10 milliamps is exactly what this module is supposed to be capable of delivering. A slight drop in the output voltage is to be expected though, because if you remember, the feedback loop has its own little voltage multiplier and doesn't see the output voltage directly. Okay, that's the most difficult part done. 
Now I've got to prepare the output module by adding a couple of transistors and miscellaneous parts. I hope you don't mind if I shorten that a bit. Neat trick, isn't it? But cleaning isn't included. That's covered in the next chapter, I think. So for cleaning flux residue of circuit boards, I like to use a coarse brush and enough acetone to make it drip down onto a paper towel. And then most importantly, I dab it dry. Otherwise, the acetone will just evaporate and leave behind the dissolved flux again. Apparently, acetone isn't as bad as people used to think, but the smell is kind of horrible anyway. So we are about to cross the finish line and it's about time, honestly. I've been neglecting everything else while working on this. People demand an update on the JBC soldering stuff, so that's what's coming next, I think. Mm. Oh yeah, one more time, please. Still working too, that's also very nice. Huh? Oh, I think we might have to do a factory reset. That's how I got the firmware image loaded. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's what I call a huge success. I'm just not going higher than 500 volts at the moment, because these output cables just don't strike me as the high voltage type. They probably won't burst into flames, but with all the effort I've invested here, I think it deserves to be done correctly down to the last detail. One final detail for this video. I'm making a Teflon lined sheet metal enclosure for the high voltage converter. The drawing for which, and also the Eagle project and the parts list for the entire upgrade, are going to be in the description soon. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.
If you choose neither disposal nor steel wool reduction, you can also let it dry out. Then you are stuck with a bit of Heisenberg meth eventually. Although I'm not sure if that substance is less problematic. Get back to work.